In this lecture, we will discuss ataxia in children. Ataxia is the decreased coordination of voluntary movements, not just walking, but really any movement in children. Causes are varied and depend a lot on how old the child is and the associated symptoms. One common cause of ataxia in children is injury to the brain. And in children in particular, common injuries include birth asphyxiation, which can lead to cerebral palsy, stroke, trauma, and hypoxic injury. So all of these are varieties of injuries that can affect the brain and result in ataxia in children. One of the conditions that can cause ataxia in children is ataxia telangiectasia. Ataxia telangiectasia is an autoreces autosomal recessive disease. The gene is carried in 1.5% of U.S. Caucasians, and it's on 11Q22.3. It's a defect in the gene responsible for DNA repair. It affects both central and peripheral nervous systems. Basically, children with ataxia telangiectasia are generally born normal and continue to develop normally until about the age when the child walks. The child often then has a progressive worsening of ambulation and running. The child often has gross and fine motor skills that deteriorate over time, and also the child will eventually develop difficulty with eye movements and dysarthria. The eye movement difficulty has to do with coordinating the movement of the head and the eyes. So often when they turn their head, they then have trouble keeping track of objects in their environment. These children will also, unfortunately, have a decline in cognition. And when we examine them, we can see telangiectasias on their skin, face, neck. About 70% of these children will have an associated immune deficiency, and as a result, they often have progressive pulmonary disease, and that is a major cause of morbidity and mortality in this condition. So here are some telangiectasias in a child. You can see them right in the eye. There are these squiggly red lines where the capillary beds have uh, developed. Another condition in children is Friedrich's ataxia. Friedrich's ataxia is autosomal recessive and is a trinucleotide repeat disorder in that each generation subsequently has more and more repeats and more and more severe uh, alteration of that gene. It usually presents in adolescence and is a progressive ataxia of all four limbs. These patients will have motor weakness and eventually cerebellar dysarthria, dysphagia, and they will suffer hearing and vision loss. Patients often get kyphoscoliosis and may have hand and foot atrophy. Usually, cognition in this case is preserved. Other degenerative problems that can cause ataxia in children include genetic causes, such as Wilson's disease, which causes an accrual of copper, and it particularly affects the basal ganglia. Also, children can get spinocerebellar ataxias. Metabolic disease can cause ataxia. Specifically, mitochondrial disorders tend to affect the nerves most, and so those children may have consequences. Lastly, obviously, brain malformations can cause ataxia. Examples of those include Chiari malformations, Dandy Walker cysts, and cerebellar dysgenesis. Let's shift to look at what could cause acute ataxia in a child. A child's walking along fine, looks great, and then suddenly has severe ataxia. There are many different causes that can cause this, but most commonly, it's a drug ingestion. Children, especially young toddlers, are always getting into things and may consume either an illicit or a prescribed drug in the home. Examples of prescribed drugs that children could get into include Benadryl, dextromethorphan, and that one's particularly common. Cough syrup ingestion often causes ataxia and abnormal movements of the eyes. One drug of abuse that doesn't show up on a screen that is around is ketamine, and ketamine causes a profound ataxia. Also, toxins can cause ataxia, and usually the one I would implicate is lead poisoning. We see a lot of lead poisoning in the United States. Also, patients can have infectious ataxia. Diseases such as cerebellitis, it's a viral condition that attacks the cerebellum and those children will present with ataxia. 
A severe otitis media can present with ataxia as well. Those usually are very severe, and that's a very unusual presentation of otitis media. Also, inside the ear, the labyrinth itself can become infected. We call this labyrinthitis, and in those cases, children can be ataxic. In all of these cases, what we do is we simply wait for the child to get better. Very rarely, children can get a viral encephalitis that can result in ataxia, but also presents with other symptoms, such as inability to speak correctly or altered mental status. Varicella and several other viruses are implicated in these causes of ataxia. So that's my brief summary of causes of ataxia in children. Thanks very much.